time and won't let him go do it. That kick is good from 38 yards by Dan Stokes. And that makes it a 37 to 13 ball game. Palmer, who started the Auburn game, didn't play particularly well and was relieved by Brindice. He's rushed for 135 yards. He'll get it again. Down to the three. Running behind big number seven. Tim Couch have turned the Wildcats offense around this season. And that was never more evident than in the Wildcats' breakthrough win against Alabama. And around these parts, they're calling it a victory for the agents. But it all hasn't been blue skies and smiles. Lately, Couch and the Cats have taken their lumps. And today, Kentucky looks to turn it around. Meanwhile, LSU head coach Jerry Donardo masterminded one of the season's most stunning upsets when his Tigers knocked off the then unbeaten and top-ranked Florida Gators. And for the first time in a long time, LSU had broken into the top 10. But that turnaround lasted barely a week, falling flat against Ole Miss. Tonight, the Tigers and the Wildcats, each looking to turn it around. Live from Lexington, next. Out to the far side. Out of the gun, on first down. Pressure. And again, he can't deny the temptation to run, and they'll have to use that time out here. the men in black. Plummer. If he's tackled, try the first down mark, and the clock will stop. Plummer, down to the 15. It's a first down with seven seconds remaining. Time to move the chains forward and get back to the line of scrimmage as he screams to his offense, line it up. He will spike the ball here. Yeah, kill it right here. Kill it right here and think about it. They are lined up with seven seconds remaining. The clock starts. And he kills the clock with four ticks left. Perhaps a bowl invitation. The snap with four seconds left. Plummer for the end zone. Throws and it's intercepted by Patrick Sertain. Sertain races down the field. His sixth of the year to deep sixth in our guess. And Southern Miss has won its sixth of the season. Wow. A quick land. Third down for Texas A&M. They need the 30. Stewart, under pressure, gets it away, and it is in and out of the hands of his intended target. Good lick by Ricky Thompson. Yard line, what a catch by R.W. McQuarters. Everybody talks about Charles Woodson at Michigan. He's got nothing on this guy in terms of being a two-way player, Artie. Well, he's a big play player also. Whenever he touches the ball, he's got a chance to make a big play. And there was no question that the Oklahoma State game plan that time was to go to him. He runs right past Brandon Jennings. The ball was a little bit behind him, and he goes up and grabs the football. That's a big play guy right there, number 17. He can do it all, Drew. 61. One yard gain. First and goal at the five. Simmons darts and did he get in? No signal yet. Stop just shot. Simmons again up in the air. Touchdown, Cowboys. Well, the one thing that just happened is exactly what Mike Hankowitz and R.C. Slocum didn't want to have happen, to give Oklahoma State big plays. They came into the game and said... We Lions quarterback Mike McQuarrie will keep it for 11 yards to open things up as the nation's second-ranked team trying to extend its winning streak to 12 dating the last season. Curtis Enos ran for 153. NU outscored Penn State 20-6 in the fourth. This pass from Tim Hughes to freshman Brian Marshall turns into a 45-yard score. Cutting the deficit to 30-20, the Cats would score once more, but with just a half-minute left falling 
30 to 27. Now, next week's Northwestern opponent is Illinois, and the Illini couldn't break into the win column for the first time today at Indiana, trailing 16-6 late but threatening. Tim Laver gets picked off by Kaiwin Superna, who looks super in returning it 90 yards for the Hoosier icing. Indiana 23, 0-8 Illinois 6. To South Bend, Autry Denson moved into third onto Notre Dame's all-time rushing list with 125 more yards today. 48 on this run as he hits the sideline, comes early in the third, and that gave the Irish a 14-10 lead on Navy. He'd score another with just under six minutes left, 21-17. Then on the game's final play, a Hail Mary that was one yard short of working. Pat McGrew outfights the Irish secondary for the prayer from Chris McCoy. He wins it. But he'll get pushed out of bounds. Watch this at the one yard line by Alan Rossum, preserving a 34 straight win over the Middies. Notre Dame is four and five. Penn State's win in Evanston set up a battle of Big Ten unbeatens next week with Michigan and the fourth ranked Wolverines. And Charles Woodson had no trouble with Minnesota 24 3. Woodson goes 33 on the reverse and helps the defense hold the Gophers to 31 yards after their opening drive. Elsewhere in the Big Ten, Michigan State loses its third straight, this time to Ohio State. Purdue's glass slipper breaks in Iowa City. In the meantime, NIU keeps Illinois from having Division I's longest skid. Make it 15 straight. Maven. Cool. I had a stinger once, too. <laughs> third down and two. And here is Couch from the shotgun. Couch to throw, and it's complete. Where will they put the line of scrimmage across the 45-yard line? And that's going to be a first down. Tail party. That is the story. Second down and one. Movement up front. Stewart with time. a couple of bullets and that's a wonderful pass and obviously it gets out of bounds and stops the clock by the big guy Lee Roy. to throw the football and they're doing it okay right now it was a good decision by him because he didn't get a penalty but I still want to run out of bounds second and ten at the 20 seconds left. They bring five. Stewart toward the end zone. Touchdown! Or a back goes outside out of the backfield. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Texas town of El Paso and beat the Miners anymore. 14-3 midway in the third quarter. I mean, things are shaking up today in the WAC, folks. It's always a little bit crazy in that conference. We'll get to the storylines. Now they lost seven straight to the Gators, meeting them down in Jacksonville. And look at Robert Edwards breaking tackles. You beat the Gators. You got to do it with the ground game. 27 yards, seven zip. No. Third quarter, Florida. Doug Johnson is pulled after a couple of picks in the first half. So Noah Brindice gets it to Jamie Henderson down to the one. The Florida touchdown cuts the lead down to four. Later, Florida on the three. Rod Frazier, Tommy's little brother, busted in. Gators by three. Back comes Georgia. Mike Bobo to Corey Allen. Sets up the Robert Edwards run. Dogs back up by four in the fourth quarter. Robert Edwards one more time. 
At Florida, defense has been tough against the run, but the toss sweep to the boundary scores his fourth touchdown of the game. Steve Spurrier, no love in the Gator Bowl today. He loses for the first time as a head. Good to the folks at Tennessee. Peyton Manning taking on South Carolina today as Jermaine Copeland who gets the lateral and finds Peerless Price. Five plays later, they got in the house with Jamal Lewis in the second quarter. The Gamecocks offense. Lewis takes the pitch, rumbles 65 yards for the touchdown. And so Tennessee, behind that defense, behind Lewis, winning on a day in which Peyton Manning has one completion in the second half. He was one for eight, a monster night. Gets the touchdown right then. Later in the third quarter, fall from four yards out. They cash turnovers into quick touchdowns to blow the game open in the third quarter. Fall. His fourth touchdown of the game, third and a half. A 21-point lead right there. And then fall one more time. Up the gut, touchdown number five. You know, the LSU folks said he's not quite 100%. He's still Alabama beaten at Bryant Denny Stadium by Louisiana Tech. They allow 500 plus yards for the first time since the 91 Fiesta Bowl. But because of that Auburn loss, it's actually a very good day for Alabama in the SEC Western Division chase. You've got three teams now with two losses. It's a mess, but Mississippi State is in there. Alabama, despite the three losses, has a chance because it plays those teams ahead of it in the standings. As we said, one of the wildest days in the SEC is three teams favored by double figures all lose, two of them at home. The one constant, though, in college football has to be the Nebraska Cornhuskers. You know about the margin in the polls. It's ever-widening with Penn State, and this is exactly why. Because the Cornhuskers just go out and take care of business against inferior teams. Tom Osborne shooting for win number 250, already up 13-0 in the first quarter. When Scott Frost pitches to the true freshman Carell Buckhalter, they just keep churning out the eye backs. He finds the corner. It's 20-0 Huskers in the second quarter. Grant Wistrom had just a monster day. Wistrom, two sacks. He forced three fumbles. He had four tackles for loss. He had nine solo tackles. That is an afternoon. And Scott Frost had a nice ball game, too. Bobby Newcomb, they recruited him as a quarterback with the freshman making big plays as a receiver. Frost contributing to the 409 yards rushing that Nebraska had. Joel Makavica, school record for a fullback with three touchdowns, and Dr. Tom gets to win number 250. Two, trying to perhaps move up or maybe just hold their ground on the polls. Curtis Enos busted in on the Wildcats there, 7-0. Penn State lead in Evanston. Ben, Wildcats will pull a fake here. Tim Hughes to Mike Nelson. 41-yard gain. Barnett loves a little trickeration on the special teams there. Northwestern would score three plays later, touch the lead to 14-7. Mike McQuery regaining some confidence. A better game this afternoon. Scrambles for the 11-yard touchdown. Penn State by a couple touchdowns at the half. Northwestern would trail by 10 of the fourth quarter. Hughes dumps it off to Brian Musa. He gets in the house in the final minute. All of a sudden, it's a three-point game. They go for the onside kick. But the Lions' hands team able to cover that up. Tikus Pettigrew on the recovery. Barnett's team will not have a winning record. And Penn State has now won 12 in a row, the longest current win streak in 1A. Adrian Autry, the big ball game. Enos, fourth straight 100-yard game. And Joe Paterno has been on the sidelines, not just the head coach, but on the sidelines for 400 Penn State victories now. Meanwhile, Michigan in the big house. The battle for Little Brown Jug. Get Charles Woodson the ball on offense. They finally do in the first quarter here. Woodson on the reverse, gets in the end zone. He is the big playmaker. Perhaps the Wolverines need the defense. Just getting it done. Uh, North Carolina fifth, Michigan fourth, Florida State third, Nebraska second, and Penn State first. I think Penn State has accomplished more than the other teams, and that's why I have them number one. We have a disagreement. I think Von Rapphorst, the redshirt freshman, making his first career start for the Trojans against Washington. The Huskies would take care of business, but perhaps a very costly afternoon. Rashawn Sheehy, the fine tailback, tackled on this run. His knee buckles under. Sheehy would sprain a ligament in that left knee. He did not return. Washington tries to pick up the slack with the passing game. Brock Heward to Fred Coleman, the brilliant layout. 10 zip Huskies. Heward strong on the afternoon. Here he finds Jerome Paith on a 22-yard touchdown. Washington, 17-0 at the break in the third quarter. It's another scarier. Heward hit by Cedric Jefferson, fumbles the football. He would limp off. 
He was walking around to the sidelines at one point, then left the field on crutches. Meanwhile, Maurice Shaw, you can call me Maurice, he gets in the end zone, gets the nice block. 27-0 Washington. Meanwhile, the Bruins just roll on. Cade McNown dumps off the pass to Rodney Lee. Zip 73 yards up the center of the field for the touchdown. Actually, not a touchdown. It would set up a Skip Hicks touchdown. In the fourth quarter, UCLA defense dominating. Skip Hicks busting through the Stanford defense into the end zone. 27-0. Skip has not been healthy in recent weeks. Look like he's a... Uh, Back to close to 100% now, 27-7. The Cardinal lose for the third consecutive time. So score with special teams here. Marcel Willis busts through. The Spartans have enough trouble on offense without giving up defensive and special teams touchdowns. Once again, Gary Berry with the fortuitous bounce. Ohio State builds the early lead, and they roll over Michigan State 37-13 as Michigan State loses a third consecutive game. David Boston caught eight passes for 119 yards. Well, Purdue brought their unbeaten Big Ten record to Iowa City and at one point led 17-7, but then it got ugly, got out of hand. Tavian Banks, 136 yards. Rob Tyne, the fullback, had three touchdowns. Well, Ricky's been brilliant. Once again, over 200 yards, 87-yard run right here. But this only got Texas within two. 23-21 Baylor in the final minutes. Phil Dawson from 54. He's a great kicker, a great leg. It's asking a lot from 54. Plenty of leg, but it's wide. And yeah, in Waco, you rip down the goalpost for any big victory over UT. Big victory for Roberts. A painful loss for Makovic. His team drops to one and frustrating day again for Rick Neuheisel. First quarter. Buffs had the lead, but then Corby Jones, the fake, gets it in the end zone. Mizzou takes the one-point lead in the fourth quarter, trying to pad the lead. Oh, we love the freeze option. The fake down the line, looking for Kent Lehman from 38 yards out. Missouri has got a powerful offense. They go into Boulder. They win by 10 to go to 4-2 and two in the conference. They all but wrap up a bowl bid. Look out, because the Huskers come calling to Columbia. More on that game in a second. Notre Dame. Hi, Ryan Leaf will be very successful in the NFL because a man 6'4", 290 has himself draped all over him and he doesn't flinch. Look at it, he shakes, he shakes off battle and then he climbs back somehow and creates a situation where they don't lose any ground, huge ground, they still have a third and 10 to operate with. And the crowd back into it, double slot this time, single setback, third down and 10. Leaf straight back. Has time, throws, caught first down by McKenzie. Well, Joe Paterno is 82 and 29 in games decided by seven points or less. He's by far the best coach in the country. The games at Penn State, it's going to be around 6.40 on Saturday afternoon, and, and Curtis Enos will run 46 yards, and Penn State will win. You got an emphatic pick. And he's got to roll away from pressure, and does. Buy some time, now he looks downfield, and nothing. Combined 28 and 11 record. Compare that. has been a four-man rush, in trouble is Leaf. And he's not going to get away this time. All the way back to the 31-yard line, and now did they take him on a field goal range. Hamilton Mee with his second sack of the half. And he got plenty on this. And it is good, and it would have been four-man rush. Keaton looking deep this time for Span. And they're going to say no foul. And that's very close, Gary. He's a John Lynch type play. Slant. And the catch is not made by McKenzie in that, that double slot. Five man rush. Leaf throws. Caught by Timms. Timms trying to shake a man. Does the 45. is going to be close to the first down. I think the second effort is going to get it for him. Second down nine. Play fake. Look out. And again, he throws while in the arms of a tackler. And this one is intercepted. There's one of Ryan Leaf. Would love to have that, but Mitchell Friedman, just kind of playing center field, made the pick. Pat Tillman was right in Ryan Leaf's trips left this time on second down and goal from the 10. Watch Mitchell Friedman again right over the center. They empty the backfield, five wideouts. They spread the whole field. They try the quarterback sneak, and Leaf gets it down to the two-yard line. Is he tough? He's taking bodies with him. He was hit at the five. 
Mitchell Friedman just to sure. They'll give it to Gilmore. He cuts in. He's close. He's in. Touchdown Cougars. Don't go anywhere. America, Nebraska, they are a juggernaut. Huge win over Oklahoma today. Florida State actually. Uh, trips right. Single setback. And this time they are checking off. That's something they don't do too much. At least not on this night. And they got a man wide open. This time is Jackson a race to the end zone, and he stopped at the 15-yard line. Well, Leaf saw something, and that, and now we're going to lay it flat. Fifth play of the drive now as the Cougars start at the 31-yard line. First down. And again, Leaf may be checking off. Blitz comes from the outside, and the throw is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Time throw is open to McWashington. Makes the catch at the 11-yard line. First down, Cougars. Jawan Cherry, the nickelback, victimized by Ryan Leaf's accuracy. Well, when you want to get heat on the quarterback, you got to commit another person in the box and to rush the passer, and that's what Arizona State's doing. But the result is you got to play man behind it, and Washington State, their receivers are just having a field day right now. They're running all over the field, passing, catching. It's just amazing. And Leaf, you know, not only, to me at least, Rams, doesn't only have the great strength to shake tackles, he's got great feet, too. Down just outside the 10. They can make a first down without getting a touchdown. Leaf steps up, throws to the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Cougars. Sean McWashington. And with a conversion, we will have a tie game. To be to run a, I've asked him this. I said, How many of those three are run plays? Well, he wouldn't give that up, but my guess is this is a run play. And it's just a sneak, and I think he got it. He did. Well, there's a case of penalties. They say penalties are costly. None could be more costly than that. That conceivably could cost the Sun Devils the game. That is a great gamesmanship call by Mike Price. And I'll tell you why. It guarantees that this game's not going to go into OT. I mean, at this point, you're just not going to do it. Ryan Leaf breaks the plane of the goal line. The side judge comes in, whistles touchdown. That's what it is. And credit the offensive line. We're going to take a game break. We go to the studio and Kevin Frazier. Guys, just want to take you around the country and show you a player. Randy Moss, 80 yards as Marshall scorches Central Michigan today. Two touchdowns for the kid. Seven catches, 193 yards. He has 20 on the year. He's got to be a Heisman hope, hopeful. But I'll tell you something, the way Ryan Leaf is playing, he should be on that board, Barry, because he looks great tonight. Get it all done, isn't he? I was just thinking about that Marshall game, too. I have to tell you. Leap straight back, throws, caught by Timms. It'll be short of the first down at the 27-yard line. And it's going to, although the offensive line for Washington State has to block well. Third down and three, here comes a blitz again. Leaf throws it up for Taylor, he makes the catch at the 45, still on his feet at the 40, and down with a big first down and a great pass. With time this time, throws, it's caught by McKenzie, gets it down close to the 30-yard line, that's gonna be another first down. Damian Richardson on the stop. And what strikes me is, I mean, second and 10, second and 15, second and 18, is all the same to Ryan Leaf. Throw somebody. He's been right on in the second half. This time he's going for it all. And unable to catch up to this one was Chris Jackson, and it, 63 yards passing now. Fourth game this year with 350 plus. That's very aggregate. Leaf this time steps up and somehow got the ball away and got it out of bounds. I'm not quite sure how he did it. He had a half of the Arizona team on him. Third down and 10. They show blitz through the Sun Devils and they come with it. Leaf has to get rid of it in a hurry. He does. It's caught this time by Black out of the backfield and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. And once again, the recovery of Arizona State's defense to the ball is a mate to go for it here. They spread the field. Nobody in the backfield. They will run out of this a lot. They cover the blitz and Freeman's got Ryan Leaf. And the ball is picked up. And this is going to be a touchdown for Arizona State. Hamilton Lee is going to pick this one away.
Georgia beat six-ranked Florida for the first time in eight years, 37-17. Robert Edwards with four TDs. Mississippi State picked off Damian Craig four times, upsetting 11-ranked Auburn 20 to nothing. Texas A&M knocked off number 19 Oklahoma State 28-25 in OT. DeAndre Hardman won it with a six-yard TD run. Number four, Michigan silenced Minnesota 24-3. The Wolverines giving up just 102 total yards. Up next for Michigan, Penn State on Saturday. Jamal Lewis ran for 205 yards, leading eighth-ranked Tennessee past South Carolina 22-7. To the NBA, where the Bulls raise their 12 yards away in the fourth quarter. They go ahead 21-13, and that was their final score. Tulsa in a mild upset over the University of Utah. Charlie Higgins had 175 yards and a couple of touchdowns in that one. BYU and UTEP down at the Sun Bowl in El Paso. The Cougars come in ranked number 25. But UTEP in the second quarter scores the first touchdown of the day. Rocky Perez from a yard away. Defense the story of the game. Drew Miller back to pass. Nowhere to go. Brian Young with the sack. And UTEP pulls the major league upset. They knock off 25th ranked BYU. 14-3 the final. BYU held without a yard rushing. Huge win for the UTEP Miners. Let's go to Hawaii. Air Force visiting the Rainbow Warriors. And in the first quarter, look at this. Have you seen this before? Their 11th block of a punter kick this year. Frank Stain Pine to the Air Force Academy falls on at the Academy League 6 to nothing. Little option football. Blaine Morgan keeps it. Good idea. Five-yard touchdown run. The Academy leads 14 to nothing. They go on to win 34-27 over the Bows. Frank Stain Pine got in the end zone twice for the Falcons. Rice and SMU. And SMU came ready to play. Toss sweep to Kelsey Adams. He goes wide to the pylon and gets in. And the Mustangs lead 7-0. Ramon Flanagan goes back, looks up, says, I'm going to run. That also was a good idea. 15 yards later, he's in the end zone. And SMU goes on to stun the Rice Owls 24-6. And they shut down their option attack. Michael Perry, the leading rusher in the conference, held at 94 yards, which is an off day for him. CSU and UNLV pass down the middle, picked off by Myron Terry. And he's going to bring it back 52 yards for a touchdown. And Colorado State would cruise in Las Vegas 45-19. Kevin McDougal, the backup running back, at 112 yards rushing in that one for the Rams. Fresno State and San Jose State. This also no contest. Fresno State's got things going now. Michael Pittman right up the gut. Nine-yard touchdown run. Fresno State wins 53-12 over the Spartans. Pittman over 100 yards rushing and he got in the end zone four times. New Mexico and Texas Christian. New Mexico, after two successive losses, Graham Lee option look, then he goes back to pass. Beautiful throw to Pascal Volt, one of three touchdowns on the day for Volt. He has 13 on the year. He's having an extraordinary season. New Mexico 40 to 10 over the Horned Frogs. Let's go to Laramie, Wyoming. San Diego State visiting. They wish they had. Jay Stoner hooks up with Wendell Montgomery. And Wyoming, they snap a two-game losing streak. They went 41-17. Wyoming's Mike Jenkins had a couple of touchdowns and 66 yards on the ground.